So while I can admit that I was at least looking a little bit forward to Survivor Series and had some level of excitement about a couple of things on the show, I can't lie that, you know, ultimately there was like this cloud that was hanging over me because of what was being billed and what was being announced and that it was going to be the final farewell to The Undertaker. And, you know, in spite of like looking forward to Roman working versus Drew and, and so on and so forth, like that was the thing that I was the most focused on. That was the thing that I was most concerned with. Like that was truly when it all said and done, at the end of that night, that was the only thing that was going to matter. And it's crazy on the one hand because Taker's been a part-timer for the better part of a decade now. So in some ways, he's already been in semi to mostly retirement state anyways. You know, officially, unofficially, whatever. So even when he's come back and he's made appearances and he's even worked matches, it feels more like special appearances than Taker actually being back and actually being any type of part of the regular roster. And with all the years spent about, will this be Taker's swan song? Is he finally done? Is he truly going to retire? And then all the times he's ultimately come back, like, you, you could say, like, it's similar to, like, the Brett Favre stuff years ago in football. Like, you get tired of hearing about it. So when it finally does happen, it just doesn't have the same impact, meaning, or significance because you've got a bit of retirement fatigue. And I think there's certainly a part of that when you, when you talk about The Undertaker, like, there's a bit of inevitability of, well, he's going to retire eventually. Like, he's been dragging it out for so long. Like, it just doesn't really matter as much in the grand scheme of things. Because even if he does, like, you still don't know that you fully buy it. You say, oh, just wait until Vince calls and asks him about something. Just wait until the Saudis throw a bunch of money at him. Like, he'll be back. And he certainly could be. But, you know, going into this thing on Sunday, like, it was being built up and hyped up so much, almost made me think that it was going to be some type of work, and ultimately it wasn't. And maybe I, even though I, I realistically believe that it was truly it, like there's always that piece. You know, when you talk about wrestling, wrestling is fundamentally built on the work. It's built on the why. It's built on the story. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they were working me, but you know, there's still a part of thinking like, hey, this might actually be it. And then it happens on Sunday. And while there was a lot of, Great nostalgia seeing, you know, The Godfather and Savio Vega and Mick Foley and The Godwins and, you know, Kane and Big Show and Kevin Nash and all these guys, all these senior citizens, if you will. Um, all the memories start flooding back to you, not just for Taker, but just in general, where we've been as wrestling fans, where I've been as a wrestling fan, where the WWF slash E has been over the years. You know, very reflective, very retrospective. Um... But that only helps but so much. And I think in general, like, as you, as you get older, you, you tend to look back more than you look ahead. Because, like, I can, I can just attest now at 39, like, for all intents and purposes, I'm probably halfway through my life. If I'm lucky, I'm only halfway through my life, or maybe a little less if I'm really lucky. Uh, but I could be more than halfway through my life. And, you know, it always seems like, especially when you get to this age, that... And there'll be some of you that are watching this might be even older than me could maybe better attest to this. Like, as you get older, you tend to look ahead less and you tend to look back more. You, you, you're reaching for what you perceive as your youth and your glory days or better times, more innocent times, happier times. And that might not always be what they actually were, but that's what they represent to you. Like, distance makes a heart grow fonder, and I certainly think that's the case when it comes to memories. Um, and I know that, you know, as this has been announced with The Undertaker and all of this, like, I've been doing this 30 Days of Taker video series in large part because, you know, is a way to reflect, it's a way to look back, it's a way to talk about this person that frankly has meant uh, so much to me, you know, personally and as a wrestling fan and etc. And, you know, watching him apparently say goodbye on Sunday, even when you talk about the, the Brett Favre type of scenario and the... I quit. The Ross Perot. I quit. I'm back. I quit. I'm back. I quit. I'm back. I quit. I'm back. Like, all that's all fun and games, but then the reality, like, really starts to sink in. Sunday night. Like, oh, crap. This might actually be it. 
And for some younger fans that don't have that much experience in exposure to The Undertaker, you know, they won't get it and they don't fully understand it. And that's okay. They don't, they don't necessarily have to. They can appreciate it as much as they can, but they can't fully relate. And, and again, that's not their fault. That's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. You know, because they could, some other fans can sit there and say, well, what's the big deal? He was barely around anyways. You know what? You're right. You are absolutely right. And some of the stuff we saw in the later years of his career, you know, from WrestleMania 30 forward, was not exactly something to write home about. Certainly wasn't. But, you know, I think Taker, for a lot of us older fans, and the ones that grew up on uh, the human Taker, or those like me that grew up on the original Dead Man, like, Taker represented something. Taker truly represented what we felt was that last tie to those golden days. Whether it be the late part of the Hogan era, whether that be for some of you that love the New Generation era, you know, for those that love the Monday Night Wars era, the Attitude era, even the Ruthless Aggression era, like, Taker was the, like, last link to that. More so than a Triple H or anybody else. Like, he was the link. He was the one that every time we saw him, those memories would come flooding back. He was the one that was that bridge between the then, the now, and the future. Like He was the building block. He was the foundation. He was the franchise piece for so many years. And, you know, for so many of us, you know, I know it certainly has to be true that when the streak was broken, some fans stopped watching and will never watch again. Because that was the last thing that they had. That was the last thing that they were holding on to. And I, I can tell you certainly that, you know, it's never been the same for me. Just wrestling in general, once the streak was broken at WrestleMania 30. And that seems silly and that seems stupid. And it, 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 it is. It absolutely is. But not everything when it comes to the human emotions uh, is rational or does make sense or is smart. Um, but as he, as he was talking on Sunday night, like it was kind of understated was short, was sweet, was to the point, was kind of mystical, repetitive, but in every way, it was the Undertaker gimmick. It was the Undertaker character. That's exactly the type of thing that I would have expected to see out of him. Um, and, you know, as you watch him walking up the ramp for the last time and hold up his fist in the air one more time, like, I was sad. I was really, really sad. Because... Again, I think of Taker, and I think about so many things, both personally in terms of also with wrestling and the YouTube stuff, like so much of it is associated with The Undertaker. I have talked in videos in the past about like, you know, you don't really realize how much these people that you don't know and you never interact with can really have impact on your life. And I said it for, for better or worse, it was certainly true with Hogan. Um, I absolutely... For better or worse, I can say the same thing about Taker. Because some of the best things that happened to me in my life in terms of friends and great friends that I made over the years and great times hanging out with people, enjoying wrestling, enjoying life, can be, at least in some ways, attributed to The Undertaker. Like, whenever I would lose a little bit of interest in wrestling for a period of time, it was either Hogan or Taker that would bring me back. Whenever I would have friends over because I bought the show or something, it was typically because The Undertaker was working that show. You know, so I associate, when I see Taker, I associate that with him. You know, I think back to those of you that have been around long enough, remember Ashley, like, while well, we're not together anymore and gone our own separate ways in life and she's got her own thing that she's doing now. You know, like, I think about that too and... You know, the life changes that came along with that and one of the real bonding experiences we had was not just wrestling, but it was the fact that we were both huge raging tanker marks. Like that was like one of the foundation pieces for everything. Like it really was. And, you know, so I think about that, both, both the good and fortunately the bad associated with that. But, you know, I could say in some ways that just like similar with Hogan, like when you, when you take that larger view and you look at look back and you think about how everything kind of pieced together. Like if Taker didn't keep me interested in wrestling all those years, I would have never started doing the YouTube thing. I would have never made half the friends that I did. I wouldn't have had 
some of the relationships that I had. Um, I wouldn't have probably ended up out here in Virginia. I wouldn't have the dogs. I wouldn't have um, a house. Like, I live in a house now, which I had never done before as an adult until 2014. That may have never happened if I hadn't moved out here to Virginia. I'm in a better place now from a career standpoint, making more money and having more potential and possibility for future career growth than I've ever had in my entire life. And while you can sit there and say, well, that's due to you and that's due to decisions that you made and everything else, that is absolutely true. You know, and, and even then you still don't do it alone. But at the end of the day, like, it's somebody like Taker that you, you can't begin to express, like, just how much of an impact these folks have on your lives. It may not seem the healthiest, it seems kind of crazy, but is there anything wrong with that? Like when people, you know, over the years have made fun of me for watching wrestling or mocking me for watching wrestling, like, number one, I didn't care, and neither should you. Like, who cares? They miss out. Number two, like they, didn't, they didn't get it, and they were never going to get it. Because these are people that you've counted on that have become such critical parts of your life, even all these years later, and they still there, and that impact lingers and lasts forever. So yeah, when, when, when you think about The Undertaker and his final farewell, to me, it's not just a farewell to the man or to the character. Not in the least bit of sense. Like, what's so hard about it is, is that it represents the closing of the door on so many chapters of life that took place over 30 years, and that's not easy. That's, that's hard. Like, I mean, I can't express to you enough, like, Taker was wrestling for WWE all the way back when I was 9, 10 years old. As much as I hated a lot of elements about my childhood and how, how much it certainly sucked from different periods of time, like, Taker was one of those that helped me get through some of that, provided me an escape like Michael Jordan did. You know, Hogan did that. Taker certainly did that. Um, you know, when, you, when I think about that, like when, you, when you're sleeping in cars, but you manage to lift and borrow a wrestling magazine, or you're able to crash at somebody's house and they happen to turn on wrestling and you're watching Raw or something. Um, you know, when you're thinking about, hey, I don't know what what type of food I'm going to be able to eat or if I'm even going to be able to eat. Like I could turn on and you might see highlights for something from, you know, a shotgun Saturday night, Saturday night heat or something like that. Um, you know, I just think about individuals like Taker that in many ways helped me escape. You know, I think about guys like Taker, characters like Taker, that helped me, even, even as crazy as it sounds, like being able to come on and do here and do YouTube stuff is in some ways is of, of, of an attempt to fulfill a dream. Like, for those of you that don't know me, that those of you that do well, so could certainly test this, but those that really don't, like, you might underestimate certain things about me, but one thing for sure is I was always known as the guy that knew all the sports stuff. And my dream was always to be in sports broadcasting, sports journalism, something. And ultimately, it's on me that that didn't truly fully come to fruition. But thankfully, via YouTube, I've been able to at least feel like I have some ability to do that. I feel like in some small way, I've been able to um, try to realize a dream and a passion of mine. But with that being said, there is no guarantee that that would have happened if we had never started, you know, Tony and I, and then later Mikey in 2010, the old Off the Rope Show channel. It was wrestling that was the pathway to those other things. It was wrestling that started so many other things. Like, it was wrestling that ended up being where, you know, Tony became great friend. Mikey became great friend. That's how I met Metal D, if you remember him. Marvelous Mark, B-Rad. Like, I could go on and on and on. All the opportunities we talked about a few months back when Road Warrior Animal passed and being able to part of that Trago says Hall of Fame Museum weekend a couple of times. Again, it comes down to people like Taker. And the fact that I was such a huge fan of theirs that they kept bringing me back. Even when I tried to peel away from wrestling, there's always that element that brings me back. And he was one of them. 
So it wasn't just a, a phony wrestler retiring on Sunday night. It was in many ways, truly, the end of an era of my life. And it feels like one of those last bits of nostalgia that I can still hold on to. Like, I couldn't flip on the TV anymore and, and watch, you know, Michael Jordan still play basketball. Scottie Pippen still play basketball, for example. Can't exactly turn on the TV and watch Walter Payton still play games. But at least once or twice a year, I could turn on the TV and Taker was still there. And I could see Taker. I could experience Taker. I could hear Taker speak. I could see him do his entrance. I could see him work a match, even if it wasn't always the best. Like, it was that living, breathing nostalgia that I just wasn't getting anywhere else. And then now, sadly, I probably won't get any more. So farewell, Taker, until you come back. Um, yeah, this is, this is about exactly as hard as I thought it was going to be when this happened. And, you know, you can mock me all you want. I don't care at this point. I have plenty of other things you mock me for. This is the least of it. Um, but, yeah, it, it's just, it's really sad. It's a somber moment. It does not represent any joy. I do not take any great thrill out of it. I do not have any relief about it. It is happiness for all the memories that I have over the years and all the things that have come associated with the Undertaker character and associated with what Mark Calloway did in professional wrestling. But it's really a feeling of somber reality that, you know, that as awkward as it was watching him retire with no fans there and that just felt right, did not feel right. That felt so wrong on so many different levels. In a year that's been so rough and wrong on so many different levels, maybe it was perfect. It's the way it needed to be. But yeah, it's hard. I knew it would be. But as I've been thinking about it more and more, and I've been thinking about it the past couple weeks, and even since Sunday night, like, yeah, this, this really sucks. We plow ahead and do the best we can. Oh, man. Makes you think about a lot of things. It really does. So farewell, Taker. Thank you for everything, sir.